Hi friends, I am Balaji Rao. Welcome to BR Max class. You observe this question. Set A is 8 power n minus 7n minus 1 where n is a natural number. Set B is 49 into n minus 1 where n is a natural number. Then which of the following option is correct? This is little difficult problem on set theory. To understand this problem, you must know binomial theorem. In case if you don't know that, you just know this statement from binomial theorem. What is that statement? 1 plus x whole power n is nc0 plus nc1 into x plus nc2 into x square plus nc3 into x cube plus and so on plus ncn into x power n. This is the statement we have from binomial theorem. How we use binomial theorem in this problem? You observe here 8 power n is there. 8 power n I will write it as 1 plus 7 whole power n. In case this type of problems here 4 power n is there then we will write 1 plus 3 whole power n. You observe in this expansion in place of x here 7 is there. In this right hand side also in place of x you just write 7 then what you will get nc0 plus nc1 into in place of x you just write 7 plus nc2 into in place of x you just write 7 plus nc3 into in place of x you just write 7 plus and so on plus ncn into in place of x you just write 7 okay so here left hand side 1 plus 7 is 8 it can be written as 8 power n nc0 standard formula nc0 is 1 5c0 is 1 7c0 is 1 like that nc0 standard formula is 1 plus nc1 nc1 standard formula is n 5c1 is 5 3c1 is 3 10c1 is 10 like that nc1 is n if you already done binomial theorem then you can understand this very easily otherwise you remember this formula nc1 is n you will learn this in binomial theorem to 7 plus here you see in this term 7 square is there in this term also 7 square is there like that here also 7 square is there we can take a 7 square common from these remaining terms you observe this term this term this term from these terms we can take 7 square common so i'll take 7 square common if i take 7 square common what i'll get i'll get nc2 plus nc3 into as you taken 7 square common here 7 will be remaining plus and so on plus ncn into if we take 7 square common here, here 7 power n minus 2 is remaining. If you want, see, you multiply this 7 square and 7 power n minus 2. What you will get? 7 square into 7 power n minus 2. As base are equal, power should be added now. 2 plus n minus 2. This is 7 power n only. Okay. This 8 power n, I will write as it is. You see this uh, 7 n. n into 7 is 7 n. Take this to the left hand side. This plus 7 n will become minus 7 n. You take this plus 1 to this left hand side. This plus 1 will become minus 1. So 8 power n minus 7 n minus 1 is 7 square. What is 7 square? 7 square is 49. You observe here. This 7 square is 49. You need to know this. Uh, in binomial theorem, you learn all these things. This term is an integer. This term is an also an integer. This term is also an integer. If we add all the integers again you will get a integer again you will get a integer so what you came to know you came to know that 8 power n minus 7 n minus 1 this is multiple of 49 this expression is multiple of 49 what it is saying this is also multiple of 49 please try to understand set a is multiple of 49 set b also multiple of 49 now when you observe the options you will get confusion with first option and fourth option which option is right up in first option it is strictly subset of b a is proper subset of b in fourth option a is proper subset of b as well as a equal to b also there how we identify a is strictly subset of b or a is subset of b to understand that i am writing few steps here i am not saying you write these steps in examination to explain which option is correct in first option fourth option i am writing these things you do not go through these things directly we can say the answer first, first let me explain what i'll do i'll put a n is a natural number in set a as well as set b all natural numbers i am taking all these numbers i'll keep in set a just to understand you i am writing these steps not not at all necessary to write these things in examination if i put n equal to 1 in this 
I'm getting zero. If I put n equal to two in this, you will get 49. You can check if you want, you just put n equal to two in this uh, and you just simplify, you will get 49. Put n equal to three in this, you will get 490. Like that, if you put n equal to four, then you will get 4067 like this type of numbers you are getting in set a if i keep this natural numbers in set b in set b if i keep these natural numbers what happens i found that i am getting numbers like this 0 49 98 like that 490 if you keep on continuing 4067 like that i am not recommending you to do like this in examination just to explain which option is correct I am writing this thing. You observe here, set A contains multiple of 49, but not all multiples of 49. Set B contains multiple of 49, but it contains all the positive multiples of 49, including 0. Here, you can easily understand A is just a strictly subset of B because you see in this 98 is there in this set B, but in this 98 is not there, correct? So here, A is strictly subset of B. Here, A is not equal to B. So we can say that A is proper subset of B. So what is the right option? First option is the right option. So fourth option is wrong option. So in this question, what is the right option? A is subset of B. We'll try to understand same type of problem with another example. You observe question number 37, which is similar to previous problem. So to do this problem, we need the knowledge of binomial theorem, especially this statement from binomial theorem. 1 plus x whole power n. What is this uh, statement? Uh, nc0 plus nc1 into x plus nc2 into x square plus and so on plus ncn into x power n. How we use this binomial theorem to solve this problem? Here 4 power n is there. No? So this 4 power n can be written as 1 plus 3 whole power n. Now in this expansion, wherever x is there, there you write 3. So in this expansion, wherever you see x, there you write 3. Then what you will get? nc0 plus nc1 into 3 plus nc2 into 3 square plus and so on plus ncn into 3 power n. Okay. 1 plus 3 is what? 4. 4 power n equal to nc0 value standard formula that is 1. nc1 value is n into 3 plus you observe here 3 square is there. In this term also 3 square is there. In this term also 3 square is there. So I can take 3 square common. If, you, if I take 3 square common, what I will get? nc2 plus nc3 into here if I take 3 square common, 3 will be remaining plus and so on plus ncn into if I take 3 square common, here you will get 3 power n minus 2 like earlier problem only. Now 4 power n, you take this plus 3 n to this left hand side, it will become minus 3 n. You take plus 1 to this left hand side, it will become minus 1 equal to 3 square. 3 square is what? 9. You see, this is an integer. This term is an integer. Like that, this term is also an integer. So here, sum of all integers is again an integer. Whatever this expression is there, that is an integer. Okay. Now, you came to know that set x is a multiple of 9. You see here, set y is also multiple of 9. Now, you will get the confusion with the first option as well as fourth option. As x is strictly subset of y or x is subset of y. Here, strictly subset means we call it as x is a proper subset of y. So, which one is correct? To understand this, I'll go with this procedure. I'm not recommending you to do all these things in examination. Just to understand this question more clearly, I'm explaining this. Like that, I'm getting the number. I put n equal to 1 in this, I'm getting 0. If I put n equal to 2 in this, I'm getting 9. Like that, I'm getting x values like this. Set y, I'll keep these natural numbers in set y also. When I put n equal to 1, I'm getting 0. When I put n equal to 2, I'm getting 9. When I put n equal to 3, I'm getting 18. Next, 27. Like that, 54 and so on I am getting. X is a set which contains multiple of 9 but not all multiples of 9. Y is a set which contains all multiples of 9. That is the point you need to understand. That's why I written all these things. So here X is proper subset of Y. X never be equal to Y in this case. So what is the right option? X is proper subset of Y is the right option. What about this fourth option? This is wrong option. I hope you understand these two questions in this class.